Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Before we hear what's going on down in Pine Ridge, let me remind you that articles bought at low cost aren't always good bargains. Quality often suffers because of the low cost. Remember this when next you're buying malted milk for yourself or family. Remember that Horlicks is infinitely superior to the cheaper, low-grade products frequently offered as just as good. It stands to reason that a product of Horlicks' superior quality, flavor, and results must cost more. Those of you who have tried such imitations of Horlicks in the hope of saving money will bear me out in this. If you want to get results, remember to always insist on Horlicks the original and genuine. Your druggist has it in both natural and chocolate flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Squire Skimp, with the assistance of his friends from the city, Professor Willoughby and his wife, are promoting society in Pine Ridge in order to sell stock in his silver mine, it being necessary to own stock in the Great Western Sterling Silver Company to be accepted in the local 400 set. The citizens of Pine Ridge are all enthusiastic over the new mode of living the professor is introducing, and the latest undertaking is the organizing of a country club. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner down at his store. Lum is just entering. Listen. Well, Lum, I'm sure glad you come over. I want to talk to you. What's the matter? What's the matter? You look shorter down the mouth about something, Abner. Oh, I'm just worried about it till I don't know my right name, Harley. Here, here, take this chair. No, no, that's all right. I can sit here on this box. Be fine. What, what is it, Abner? Tell me. Well, it's about Elizabeth. Oh, having some trouble at home, huh? Yeah, sort of. Elizabeth's been asking me to close up the store here, and I just don't know what to do, Harley. Oh, yeah. Close up the store. Yeah, since she's got the society bug, why, she thinks it's a disgrace for me to be working for a living. I think that Professor Willoughby put them ideas in her head. Well, come to think about it, Abner, you are about the only one around here that is working now. You and Dick Huddleston. Yeah, I talked to Dick about it, and he said there ain't no disgrace in making an honest living, no matter how far up in society you get. Well, you know, Dick's awful old-fashioned in his ideas, though, Abner. You notice he ain't taking no part in these society doing. He's going to be so fur behind in manners and stuff like that, he'll be ashamed to get out around any of the rest of us. Well, the only reason he's been left out of everything is because he ain't got no stock in that silver mine. He says that he loves to get out and have a good time, same as anybody, but that he ain't going to buy no stock to do it. I know, I know. That's what he told me. I've been trying to sell him some stock, you know. Well, I still don't see why they got their own stock in that silver mine before they can belong to the SSTR. Squire explained that to you, Abner. The reason they want them all to be stockholders is because we know they'll all be rich here pretty quick off of the silver mine, and we don't want nobody in the 400 sets that can't afford to have parties and serve refreshments, ice cream and stuff. Yeah. Well, there's some things about this society, business it's all right, but everybody quitting work around here. I'm just afraid there'll be a lot of hungry people here in Pine Ridge next winter. Pops is going to grow up in weeds and everything else. Oh, well, <laughs> when them dividends come rolling in, we won't need no crops. We can all buy canned goods, salmon, and sardines and stuff. Yeah, but that idle rich country club they talking about, playing golf all day long. They'd spend that much time working, putting in a crop while they'd be a heap better off. They don't need to stuff themselves while they can give it to somebody that does. Yeah, I don't believe they're going to be able to get up that country club no way. We had a meeting over at Squire's office this morning. Don't look like we're going to be able to get enough members to put it over. Well, they started out wrong. Why, won't everybody to own five shares of stock in the silver mine before they could get in it? Well, that was to keep exclusive, though. Yeah, it sounds like a scheme to sell more stock to me. Oh, Swan Abner, you ought to be ashamed of saying that. After Squire letting you in on that silver mine stock, just because he thought so much of you, and you turn right around and talk about him like that. Well, it just <laughs> never sounded right to me. I don't know why. He offered to build a golf course and just give it to us. All he had to do was to us to furnish the ground to put it on. Yeah, but we had to buy the land from him. Oh, well, that weren't his fault. The Professor Willoughby knows more about golf courses than anybody in town, and Squire had him look around to find the right piece of ground to put it on, and 
After looking them all over, why, he picked that lower 40 a squire. Yeah, but the very idea, the squire wanting us to pay him $50 an acre for it. He never gave but $8 an acre, and then that was more than it was worth. Well, ain't worth more than that for a farming, no. But natural, when he found out he had the only piece of ground around here you could grow a golf course or uh, build a golf course on, he'd want what it's worth. Like if a feller bought land for uh, five or ten dollars an acre and then found oil on it, you wouldn't expect him to sell it for just what he gives for it, would you? Oh, is it oil on the land, too? No, I say if there was. Oh. It's the terrain on that land of squires that makes it such a good place for a golf course, Professor Willoughby says. It's the uh, what? The terrain. Why, there ain't no train over there. There ain't even no railroad track. Terrain, Abner, terrain, the shape of the ground. That's what the professor calls it. Well, I wanted to learn how to play golf all right, but I never wanted to spend $50 an acre for land to do it on. Well, like I say, I don't believe they're going to be able to raise the money to do it with, no how. Looks like a shame, too. Had the plan all drawn up for the clubhouse and everything. Uh, plans drawn for what? The clubhouse. Oh, hits a dandy. You just ought to see the picture they got drawn. What's it for? A clubhouse. A house to keep our golf clubs in. Couldn't just leave them laying around over there on the golf course, rain on them and everything else. Yeah. Danny, you don't care to know a thing about golf, Abner. No, no, I wouldn't even know which end of the caddy to use. Well, Professor Willoughby was going to learn us all them things, though. See, he was going to be the club pro, because he played once, knows all about it. Yeah, he's going to be the club what? Club pro, professor. Is he a golf professor, too? Oh, yeah. I know that that fella can teach might not anything. Him and his wife, Juan. Elizabeth is taking bridge lessons from her. Yeah, yeah, I know. I seen her there at the class this morning. Are you taking them, too? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> He's about 12 of us. For the land. Cedric's taking, you know. Oh, my goodness. There's God. three tables of us. There's something you ought to have, Abner. Contract lessons. There ain't nothing that'll put a polish on you any quicker. Thanks. Oh, my. You're getting right up on the top of society when you get to playing that stuff. Well, I played cards all my life, but I never had to have no lessons to learn how. I always just kept on to it. Well, you see, this is different from pitch or clinch or peanut or lemon them games. It is. Yeah, you have what they call a card language in contrast. Well. For instance, uh, they'll say, I'm West and uh, my partner... You mean East. Jim West over at Terry Hill? No, no, the direction West. Oh. See, they changed their names to North, East, South, and West in this game. Well. <laughs> That's the uh, way they show you how to play. Uh -huh. Now, like if West wants to bid hearts, why, he'd indicate by bidding a spade. Well. And then his partner, East, would bid two diamonds to let him know that he's got clubs. Well, why do they do all that beating around the bush that way first? He's got spades, why don't he say he's got them? Well, that wouldn't be no fun, though. What? You bid around like that for about ten minutes. Talking the card language, and if you get the bid while your partner lays his hand down, he's a dummy. Well. <laughs> but about nine times out of ten, when you see what he's got, you feel like the dummy yourself. Well, I don't think I'd like that. Oh, it's interesting. Better bid clubs one time to let you know he's got diamonds, and the uh, next time he's liable to bid clubs and mean he's got spades. That's what they have so many arguments about it. See, might not all the players have got different ideas about that card language. Yeah, they have a lot of arguments, huh? Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> Just a minute, the hand's over and the last trick to uh, the partner starts arguing with one another about the way they ought to play it. Well. <laughs> and arguing about what they meant when they said so-and-so and so-and-so. Uh, so-and-so? Yeah. Well, what, what do they mean when they say it? When they say what? So-and-so. Well, they don't mean nothing. I just... Well, why they want to say it for us, they don't mean it. Then. They don't say it. Well, you just now said they did, Lom. Said after the game is over, they always argue about what they meant when they said so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. Oh, yeah. What I meant, though, they have arguments because they weren't talking the card language right. Uh -huh. You just ought to hear <laughs> Why'd you take me out? And why'd you bid hard so I'd know you had him? Why'd you double her? Why did you double her? <laughs> they hold sort of a post-mortem after every hand, you know. What in the world did you lead that queen for when you knowed she had a sneak in clubs? <laughs> huh? That's what they say. Huh? huh. Argy, argy, argy. <laughs> then after somebody gets ahead, they get vulnerable. That's when you got to watch out. Get so mad, they get vulnerable, huh? Yeah, they... Huh? No, vulnerable. That's part of the game, Adam. Well, that just sounds to me like they're carrying things too far here. I'm getting sort of disgusted with the way some of these folks is acting since they got in society anyway. 
that professor's wife in particular. She's setting a bad example for the women folks here in town. Wearing them shorts and smoking cigarettes. Huh. Well, they're wearing them shorts everywhere now, Abner. That's the style, she says. I don't care what the style is. As long as I'm comfortable, they can't get out on the streets and them things and pine rigs. No, sir. I made up my mind this morning that the next time I see that woman on the street in an outfit like that, I'm going to eat rest her and throw her in jail. Make an example out of her. Well, now, Abner, you're going to have to get shut of a lot of them old-fashioned ideas if you expect to keep on being comfortable. They was all right back in the old days, but Pine Ridge has changed. Yeah, it's a changing too much to suit me. The only trouble of it is you just can't keep up with things. You're in society now, Abner. You've got to keep up with the time. Well, if I've got to close up my store and take singing lessons and take bridge lessons so that I can learn how to argue all day with my friends, well, I, I don't know where I want in society or not. Yeah, it is a heap different from ever I thought it was. Too much. But you know that old Edward saying, when in Rome, do as Romans does. Well, it just don't... Huh? Huh? When and where do as who does? I say, when in Rome, do as Romans does. What I mean Have is... Have they it... got society in Rome, too? I don't know. That's just an old saying of mine. Tell you the truth, I think Rome burned down a long time ago anyway. I know I've heard about somebody playing a fiddle while he's on fire. Well, did he think that put the fire up, playing a fiddle? I don't know that, is that professor trying to get that started now, having somebody play a fiddle every time we have a fire here? No, I just said when in Rome do to... Well, for the land sake. Why? Who in the world is that? Oh, you mean them two little boys riding them bicycles? Them ain't little boys. That's a couple of women folks wearing shorts. Short? Dad, blame it, I'll put a stop to that. Wait a minute, Abner. Hey, hold on there. Stop right where you at. What's the meaning of running around town outfit like that? Abner, Abner, wait a minute. You better find out who it is first. I don't care who it is. Just get out and off of them bicycles. You're both under e -ray. Abner, you idiot. That's your wife and daughter, Elizabeth and Pearl. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Abner seems to be having difficulty adjusting himself to the new mode of living in Pine Ridge. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to turn over the rest of the program to the mothers who listen to Lum and Abner. I especially want them to hear the following letter from Mrs. Winifred Carson of Pasadena, California. Over 40 years ago, when my youngest sister was born, Mother was at a loss to know what to feed her. Nothing agreed with the baby, and Mother was unable to nurse her herself. Well, as you know, at that time, Horlicks was a comparatively new product, and not so well known as it is today. But fortunately, my father had heard about it and decided to try some. Honestly, it was the most wonderful thing we'd ever seen. The baby stopped crying and showed marvelous results right away. But well, naturally, when my baby was born recently and didn't make any progress, I thought of Paulette. From a sick, frail little thing, she's grown up into a fine, healthy girl, never sick a day. We are grateful to your wonderful product. Well, Mrs. Carson, we certainly appreciate your letter. How clearly it shows the benefits that Horlicks has been bringing through two generations. We have received thousands of letters similar to yours. Mothers, you can get Horlicks today at your favorite drugstore. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at this same time.